Monarch, Legacy of Monsters, an Apple original series. The world is on fire. I decided to do something about it. On November 17th. This place, it's not ours. Believe me. The most massive event of the year arrives. But if you come with me, you'll know everything, I promise. Oh my God, go, go, go! Monarch, Legacy of Monsters. Streaming November 17th, only on Apple TV+. Plus. Vaginas are absolute magic. And Ollie is here to give them the respect they deserve. That means shame-free supplements made with clinically studied ingredients to keep your pH in check. And your pleasure a priority. Put yourself on top. Go to Ollie.com today. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. I just want to jump in here with a quick note about some changes that are happening. This podcast is now going ad supported. What that means is I will be releasing select episodes from the hundreds of episodes I have archived now on Patreon and releasing them here. A lot of these were recorded a couple of years ago during 2020, especially. However, I have gone through them and deemed that the parenting information was still really relevant. So just be aware that some of these releases may be out of order chronologically. Also, if you would like to listen to the podcast ad-free, you can still join Patreon. I'll still be releasing podcasts there with a few bonuses. One is that it will be ad-free. One will be that you get the podcast slightly earlier than everybody else. And I'll also be doing a bonus episode every month with a Q&A that's patron specific. So if that's something you'd like to do, you can join for a dollar a month and we'll see you there. Thanks, guys. Hey, hey, guys. Welcome to Patreon. If you are not a patron of mine already, welcome, welcome. This is my new platform, you guys. So I will be doing, there's all kinds of content here for patrons and there's various levels of support and tiers and you can scroll through this whole Patreon page to check that out. There's also a video that I made and a little post there linking you to how Patreon works. But this is also where I'm going to do my public content. So I'm veering off of like WordPress and the website because I just, Patreon has this really cool capability. It's a really cool platform that I am loving. Excuse me. So this is my um, first public post. And I wanted to do a public post because there's a big question coming up as we're reopening and hopefully on the tail end of this pandemic here. Um, The last few weeks have brought an onslaught of a particular question. And it's so funny because it came up in one of my parenting groups And then it was like the portal to hell opened up and it became the question that everybody was grappling with. And that is a question centering around bad guys, bad guys versus good guys and quote unquote aggressive play. And this is in quotes because this is not really aggression. But if all of a sudden your kids are obsessed with the bad guy, the bad guys, killing the bad guys, some kids are asking for weapons, some kids are asking for endless protection, some kids are getting a little obsessed talking about bad guys, and parents are trying to sort of put them off, you know, and and give them some logical um, explanations. What we have here, you guys, are two things that are colliding. One, we have this horrible, scary virus that has changed life irrevocably, of course. And two, we have a society that equates bad guy versus good guy, good guy play as a problem. The second thing here that bad guy, good guy play as a problem is due to a couple of factors. We live in a country where school children are regularly shot, right? And so the idea of playing with any sort of weapon, any sort of quote unquote killing, pretend or not, seems all kinds of off. And I get reports from this, like as I'm a mom of a boy, um, let's see, Sandy Hook took place. That's why I started to homeschool, right? So Pascal was in first grade. Um, And after that, it was like, oh my God, your kid can't pick up a stick at a playground. Your kid can't make a gun, you know, um, a finger and thumb sign with their hand and you can't, you know, you can't be that mom that allows that play. Maybe you really don't want your kid playing like that. But I know for me, I have always thought of this play as healthy um, and I'm going to 
I'm going to speak to that point, <laughs> but man, you, you really kind of had to do that out loud parenting too. Like you couldn't let your kid be the bad guy, good guy. So we, we started to judge this kind of play. Another reason it kind of fell out of favor is a huge part of good, good guy versus bad guy play. Often, I don't even know how kids know about this because we really don't even say it anymore, but there's like cowboys and Indians and that's disrespectful and politically incorrect, right? Um, cops and robbers. Nobody really wants their kids to play cops and robbers. We have all this stuff with, you know, cops and robbers these days. So this kind of play is often seen, of course, with both boys and girls, but there is a particular squelching of the boyness in this kind of play. And we know there's like a huge focus, of course, with both genders, but more definitely slanted towards boys where we want to raise them to be, you know, have a lot of empathy. We want them to be kind. We, you know, we don't want them to be super toxic, right? We want our boys to show and talk about their feelings. And historically, that's not how boys were raised. However, aggressive play, wrestling, roughhousing, and the bad guy must die it really shouldn't be dampened. I'm going to call this type of play aggressive play just for brevity. It is so good for kids in the best of circumstances, but if you're seeing it all of a sudden, it's not a huge stretch to see this through the actual kids' eyes, right? Because there is an enormous bad guy out there right now it's a virus and no amount of explaining is going to make your kids see the science behind this. It's a big fucking bad guy. And guess what? The bad guy must die. They need to play this out. So we see this all the time. We, we post the um, Mr. Rogers meme on Facebook. Play is the work of childhood. And that is no fucking joke, you guys. Play is the work of childhood. So you know what they're doing when they're doing bad guy play? You know what they're doing when they kill the bad guy and they got to kill the bad guy? They're working it out in their head. They're working out their own boundaries. They're working out their own personal safety. They're working out their anxiety. They're working out their feelings. And then we come along and judge it. And we say, don't do that. Right. Monarch Legacy of Monsters, an Apple original series. The world is on fire. I decided to do something about it. On November 17th. This place, it's not ours. Believe me. The most massive event of the year arrives. If you come with me, you'll know everything, I promise. Oh my God, go, go, go! Monarch Legacy of Monsters, streaming November 17th, only on Apple TV+. Plus. Hey, in the best of times, aggressive play, and this is not true aggression, is super good for kids. If you've read, oh crap, I have a toddler. There's like a whole section I have, a whole chapter on play and how you know how much I love wrestling and roughhousing. There is no better teacher of boundaries than some hands-on rough play. There is no better way to know your place in the world than wrestling. Now in my book, I equate it to like, you know, it's not all bad for a three-year-old to realize that you're a lot bigger than them and can take them out. That's not a bad boundary to learn, right? Because they, they think they own the world. But also in bad guy versus good, good guy play, we have this tremendous learning of that the child can win right? That the child can win over the bad guy. And that's equally important. Yeah. In this very, very, very scary time, this kind of play is super important for control. This helps your child feel safe. It makes them feel in control, which will abate a lot of the anxiety that we're seeing, right? It may seem like your toddler has all the control. It may seem like your three and four year olds boss everybody around and that they have all the control, but they have so little control. And listen to me very clearly because I, I have basically two camps of parents contacting me. And one is like their kids are being eaten up by anxiety. And the other one's like, I don't see this anxiety at all. Like my kids live in their best life over here, eating bonbons and watching Frozen 2 on repeat. It doesn't matter. Your kids are picking up on the global anxiety. Your kids know that they're not seeing their friends. Your kids know that they're not seeing grandma and grandpa. Your kids know that everybody in the house is up each other's ass because that mom and dad are working from home, right? They get it. They're not stupid, right? So even if you think your kid has no anxiety, it's looming there, yeah? 
even if they don't know the particulars of the virus because they're too little or they don't really get it, they know that there's this bad guy shit kind of hovering, yeah? Please understand that killing the bad guy is necessary in this part, uh, part of this play. It's a necessary part. The bad guy must die. Whether it's the robber, the monster, or just some generic bad guy, they must die. This is the whole crux of this kind of play. And if you let children play, if you just watch them, or if you really let them lead you, they're going to have a script for you. They are. And there's going to be elaborate rules about what constitutes good and bad. There's going to be an elaborate seven minute death scene. Again, this not only controls actual dying and the bad guy dying, but it controls the appropriate amount of pity that the audience should have for the child dying. Right? There are complicated rules about what each side you know has to do and so you need to let them play if, if they're siblings or friends whatever situation you're on in let the children play yeah of course if it gets shady it starts to escalate you you know when that's starting to happen of course you might have to step in if you are playing this kind of play with your child let them lead take their script do not try to judge do not try to manage the play with your grown-up bullshit it is bullshit, and I'm going to say that really loud and clear. Don't try to manage this kind of play. You're going to learn so much. You're going to see your kid working out this, these very complex emotions, yeah? A child killing off a parent in this kind of play is nothing short of David versus Goliath, right? And we love that story. You guys, half of Hollywood is this archetypical story, the bad guy, the, the little guy takes on the big guy and wins. It's also a hero's journey. If you want to get very esoteric and um, I love the hero's journey, Bill Moyers, I don't know if you know him, but um, this is an epic tale and we have so few coming of age ceremonies now for our kids, but the hero's journey is one that we all have to take and it's when we figure out who we are as people. It is Harry Potter versus Voldemort. It is Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. It is all over Hollywood. We love this story and that's what your kids are playing out, yeah? The hero's journey is key for our young ones to grow into strong, capable, loving adults. Let them start this play. Let them lead this play. Don't interfere. Don't judge it. It is not indicative of your child being a sociopath or being a future criminal. Literally, this has nothing to do with your child, you know, normalizing violence. It does not have to do with any sort of future indication that they're not going to be empathic, that they're not going to be kind. Okay. And I just, you know, if you know my book again, you know how bad I come down on the kind culture. This play, again, is the work of childhood. I'm going to link two articles that go deeper into the science of aggressive play and particularly how it affects our boys. But again, just condone this play and, and have fun with your kids with it. Let them lead you. All right, you guys, I'm going to sign off for today. Rock on.